Hey team, today we're going to be talking about making fine art prints from your artwork. This is a question I get all the time, so I thought that I would make a video about it. Let me start off by saying that if you don't have quality equipment at home to make fine art prints, then you should probably just get somebody else to do it. What I mean by this is if you don't have a good camera, if you don't have a tripod, if you don't have a G-Clay printer at home, there are people out there who do have this kind of equipment and they can probably do a better job than you. <laughs> but if you do have some of this equipment and you want to give it a go yourself, then let's talk about the process. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that not all of us have G clay printers at home, but if you do have a camera and you do have a tripod and you want to make prints of your artwork, then let's go. So to start making prints of your work, you're going to need a piece that you made and that you love. And next you need to capture a high quality image of that piece of art. There are a couple ways to do this. First is to take a scan of your artwork and second is to take a high quality photo of your artwork. I've actually never done the scanning technique uh, with my own art, but I have seen it done very effectively before. It'll just require a high quality scanner, which may be a little bit harder to come by than a camera. So for the purpose of this video, we're gonna be focusing on photographing your artwork for prints. In the past, I've gotten my work professionally photographed by people who have the fancy cameras and the fancy lighting setup and everything, but I've also photographed my own work myself. I would recommend that if the piece you're making prints from is a larger artwork, maybe like bigger than 20 inches by 20 inches or something, then you might wanna get it professionally photographed just because this process will probably involve taking multiple images or photographs of the artwork and then stitching them all together and this just involves a little bit more work a little bit more expertise and a little bit more room for error so personally i would rather have somebody else take care of that for me so for this video we're going to be focusing on photographing smaller artwork and in this case a 12 by 12 painting that i recently completed I'm not gonna get too technical in this video about exactly what camera you should be buying and what lens you need and all that kind of stuff because that's really gonna depend on what your budget is and what your needs are. But I will include some links in the description below of articles that I read that I found were helpful in helping you choose new equipment if you're starting from scratch. So what you're gonna need first is a camera. In this case, a mirrorless or a DSLR camera is your best option because you're looking for ultimate image quality. And chances are your standard point and shoot camera or your smartphone camera just ain't gonna cut it. Now for your lens, you're gonna want your focal length to be at 50 millimeters. And I think personally getting just a 50 millimeter prime lens is a great option. Next, you are absolutely gonna need a tripod. This is what's gonna keep your camera steady while you shoot the artwork. For this, you don't need anything too fancy. Actually, in this video, I'm gonna be using a tripod that I'm pretty sure was in my parents' basement for like 30 years. As long as it's holding your camera steady, safely, and can be more or less easily adjusted so that the whole process isn't, you know, <laughs> a nightmare. In this video, you'll see me using my old, um, Nikon D5200 DSLR camera that I got like literally seven years ago. <laughs> I do, by the way, have a better tripod and camera. They're just currently being used to film myself. Optimal video quality for you. So once you have the camera, the lens, and the tripod, you're ready to start shooting. I think it's always best to use natural light to photograph your artwork, so for that purpose, Let's head outside! Field trip! A few moments later. It is a beautifully overcast day today. It's a little bit foggy, um, but still super bright. So it's creating this really nice, natural, soft light. And it is perfect conditions for photographing artwork. I am on my back terrace in my Crocs. And my garden is still holding on for dear life. 
though it's probably gonna get a little bit too cold for it soon. Anyway, let's shoot some art. So let's talk camera settings. Your ideal f-stop to shoot art is between f8 and f11 with your ISO at 100. Like I said before, shooting outside on an overcast day is awesome because you're getting that indirect natural light. It's going to take some adjusting of your shutter speed to get the lighting just right, so take some test photos and adjust as you go. Once your settings are all perfect, set a timer for your camera for about 10 seconds, click the shutter and step away from the camera. This avoids any shake that may occur from you simply touching the shutter button and helps get a crisp photo. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're photographing in either JPEG or RAW or both because this is gonna give you maximum quality in the next steps, which is editing in Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop. Soon after. And we're back in the studio. How did you like that little outdoor segment, huh? Nothing wrong with a bit of change of scenery once in a while, am I right? What's that? You liked the garden? You wanna see more of my garden? <laughs> okay. Back to business. Now we are entering the editing stage. I mostly like to edit my photos in Adobe Lightroom and what I'm focusing on this stage is color correcting, making sure that the lights and the darks are where I want them to be, and also correcting any little blemishes that I see on the painting. What I like about making prints from my artwork is that to a degree I can kind of go back and fix mistakes that I feel I've made during the painting process. So whether that's like cropping the image, um, smoothening out some areas, adjusting certain colors, etc, etc. And often I actually end up liking the print more than the original painting. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't say often, that happens sometimes. There's nothing like an original, am I right? done with the editing, the next step is to save the image at the highest quality possible. So you're going to want to save either as a JPEG or a TIFF file. I can't even really explain to you what the difference is and which one is better over the other because I'm not very much a techie person, but that is something that a quick Google search will solve for you. So go ahead and pause the video if you need or don't. Et voila, 
the image is now saved on a USB and the hardest part is behind us. Now all that's left to do is the actual printing of the image. <laughs> now, unless you have a really high quality printer at home, if you do, good for you. Many of us do not have the money or the space for these things. You will need somebody else to do this part for you. When finding somebody to do your prints, a pretty fail-safe tactic would be to just search G Clay printing services. And as I mentioned in a previous video, a G Clay is basically the highest quality print that you can get. And depending on where you're at, it shouldn't be too difficult to find a G Clay printer in your area. At the print shop, your friendly neighborhood printer should do some test prints for you. So basically, they take that image file that you brought and they will print out a small section of the image or they'll shrink down and make a tiny little miniature version of your print. Like this one. So cute. And from there, you can review the colors and the brightness and darkness. And once you are satisfied, then you can give them the thumbs up to start printing. For my limited edition prints that I am hand signing and numbering myself, I use a local Giclée print shop here in Toronto. QSQ Giclée Boutique. Though there is a whole other way to get prints made that we have yet to talk about, and that is using a fine art dropshipping company or print on demand company. I actually work with two different print on demand companies that handle all of my open edition print orders. So what do these companies do? Well, basically you go to their website, they have a variety of materials to choose from, whether that's fine art paper, stretched canvas, etc. You choose your material, you choose your size, you upload that beautiful image that you just created, and you complete your purchase. The company then creates your print and then ships it directly to you or directly to your customer. I personally love this option for my open edition prints because I hate packaging and shipping, and these companies will just handle all of that for you. It's also great because this way I don't have to keep a print inventory at home. I'm currently working from home and I have no extra space. So this way I can just forward along the orders I get from my customers and bada boom bada bing. The downside to working with a dropshipping company is that you don't have that face-to-face -face conversation with someone. You don't have that whole test printing process. So what I've had to do in the past is edit my images, send them there, cross my fingers, wait for two weeks until they're shipped to me, and just hope that everything is the way that I want. And if it's not, like if the colors are too saturated or not saturated enough, then I'll have to edit the image again, resubmit the order, wait another two weeks while I cross my fingers and then hope that it's perfect the next time around. This process can be costly and also very time consuming. But once your image is perfect, then everything is easy peasy lemon squeezy. The reason why I work with two fine art dropshipping companies is because one of them handles my European sales and then the other one handles my North American sales. Ooh, ooh, did you hear that? Ooh, I'm hungry. As of right now, I use the company Prodigy for all things Europe. I'm really happy with their products. They have great customer service. I just have had a few bumps in the road with them with um, images being a little bit pixelated or colors not being correct and had to request a couple reprints in the past. But like I said, great customer service, so those things were cleared up right away. And for my North American sales, I use Pictorum, and I think that their Giclés are top-notch and also have great customer service, so I'm very, very happy with their. <laughs> business. We're really good business partners. Honestly, if Pictorum shipped to Europe for no extra cost, then I'd probably be using them for everybody, everything, for everyone, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> Nothing. I will put links to both of these fine art dropshipping companies in the description below. 
So that is all the knowledge I think that I can share about making fine art prints from your beautiful artwork. I hope that you found this video helpful. I think that there is probably lots of information that I missed. I'm not a professional printer, okay? I'm a professional artist, but maybe you learned something in this video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And if you're feeling nervous about creating prints for the first time, don't be, you know? Like, if you don't have the equipment to make it yourself, there are people out there who will do it for you, for a price, you know? Nothing in this world is free. <laughs> but don't let that stop you from sharing your artwork with the world, okay? I always appreciate your likes, your comments, and your channel subscriptions. Keep making beautiful art, people. Or ugly art. Or happy art, or sad art, or scary art. You know, just keep creating. I'm Brooke Cormier, and I'll see you next time. See you next time. Thank you.